In 2009, the Nobel Committee awarded one half of the physics prize to Charles Kuen Kao for his groundbreaking achievements in fiber optic communications. Back in 1966, Kao had been instrumental in proving that light could be transmitted over hundreds of kilometers using the purest optical glass fibers, laying the groundwork for high-speed internet that now allows millions of texts, images and video to be sent around the world in a flash. But more than a decade earlier, an Indian scientist named Narendra Singh Kapani had managed to transmit images over a bundle of optic fibers for the very first time. Born in 1927 to a Sikh family in Punjab, Kapani studied in Agra University and worked in the industrial wing of the Indian Armed Forces. When I first started my work in technology, which was in India in an ordnance factory, learning how to design and manufacture optical instruments, learned that in India, then came to Imperial College in London, primarily to learn about technology at the next level. And a year or two later, I was supposed to go back to India and start my own company. But he received a scholarship from the Royal Society to conduct research in fiber optics, a term that he coined in an article for the Scientific American. I worked for about a year and a half on trying to make glass fibers and align them in a way so we can show that they can transmit light and images together. Recognizing his breakthrough work, his professor, Harold Hopkins, pushed him to do a PhD in optics, much to Kapani's surprise. I had assumed having a PhD was a negative thing because it makes an egghead out of it. That was my assumption at the time. I wanted to be a practical man in the world and do things. I was getting ready to go come back to India. And I had actually met Nehru, who wanted me to become the scientific advisor of Ministry of Defense. And that I thought was quite interesting. But soon after, while presenting the very first publication on fiber optics in a scientific conference in Italy in 1956, Kapani met an American professor who convinced him to move to the U.S. And so I came to University of Rochester as a faculty member. And one year led to another, which led to a job, which immediately got me into entrepreneuring. And instead of starting a company in India, I ended up starting my first company in this area, in Palo Alto. I took it. Started in 1916, took it public in 1967. Kapani went on to publish more than a hundred research papers on optoelectronics and obtained a similar number of patents to his name. So, when the Nobel Committee omitted his name and included only Charles Kao, many scientists were surprised, especially since the committee had acknowledged Kapani's groundwork in a detailed publication about the 2009 Physics Prize. But Kapani has said that he respects their decision while noting that his work did indeed precede Kao's. Today, in his 90s, he lives in the U.S. as a businessman and a philanthropist, seeking to strengthen the ties between the Sikh community and others in America through his charitable foundation. When I used to teach entrepreneurship at the uh, University of California at Santa Cruz, I used to say to the students in the first lecture, I used to say, most of you should never become an entrepreneur, but those that succeed can get someplace. And fortunately for me, I've been having a lot of fun together. <laughs>